everyone, it's another edition of Diaspora Network, the show that showcases Nigerians who are doing the country proud in different parts of the world. On the show today, it's back to school for thousands of international students who have embarked on studies in the diaspora, many of them gaining admission to schools located in places other than the country of origin. Our special report addresses the culture of studying abroad and of course the rising trend of Nigerian students seeking such opportunities in the diaspora. And then meet Dr. Adejimi Adeniji, a celebrated academic and founder of the Black in Mathematics organization, a voice that echoes the exploits of black mathematicians across the globe. It's all coming up in the next 30 minutes or so, but we begin with a look at what's in the news this week. The passing of the late Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II has led to an outpouring of emotion that spreads beyond the shores of her home nation. As the former head of the Commonwealth and the world's longest serving monarch, her loss brings with it a great void in the world's political, diplomatic and humanitarian scene. It was so serene and I'm so happy because we from the Commonwealth countries, she is the queen of Commonwealth for us. She has made so much impact in the lives of all of us and particularly for me as my family. My father used to show us pictures of when he accompanied the president of our country to come for her coronation in 1953. And so we grew up seeing her even before I knew I would ever come to UK. Our father kept telling us stories of how he saw a woman ruling men that it, she has never seen it. And so he vowed that when he gives birth to girls, he will educate them. So I owe my education to this great, great lady. Her legacy will live on. While millions mourn her death, others have expressed outrage at the lack of accountability the royal family seem to have taken for their role in building the British Empire and colonialism. A controversial tweet made by Carnegie University professor Dr. Uju Anya denouncing the late monarch has caused outrage across the world. It has since been removed from the platform. In response to the backlash, the linguistic and critical studies professor wrote, If anyone expects me to express anything but disdain for the monarch, who supervised a government that sponsored the genocide that massacred and displaced half my family, you can keep wishing upon a star. The University of Carnegie later issued a statement that it does not condone her offensive and objectionable message adding that her sentiments are not shared by the institution. Pastor Matthew Ashimolowo is the founder and senior pastor of Kingsway International Christian Centre. He spoke to us about why forgiveness is so important at a time of mourning. Let's face it, honestly, slavery had been abolished since 150 years or 160 years or thereabouts. We cannot continue to play the blame game. It is important for people of color to realize that uh, the freedom of a person is not in the hand of someone else. If you keep banging the table of the queen and say, uh, we need to see a sense of repentance. How? If all you want is for somebody to verbalize repentance, you can get that. But there will not be a social change and move until we ourselves have a change of mindset. This is the first time in the United Kingdom. And we have a Kwaten, a Ghanaian, as our Chancellor of the Exchequer. Mm -hmm. When we have a Nigerian who is now the Minister of Trade, usually you put people of color, particularly Africans, as Minister of State, mm -hmm. that's the best to get. But these guys are now on the forefront during the last debate uh, Buddy Mock was able to come first. There is a parrot shift. So instead of you occupying the streets and screaming, be part of the change. Do things that will command respect, like I said earlier. You don't need apologies. We need respect. Juliana Olayinka with the Diaspora Network News Wrap in London. 
Now, the Nigerian Market Sentiments and Study Motivations Report 2022 says a full nine out of every 10 Nigerian students are currently seeking opportunities to study abroad. Many are successful at the end of their studies, but sometimes the story is different. Now, here's how the Nigerians in Diaspora Commission is viewing this narrative. Getting an education in an institution overseas has many benefits, but this does not rule out the downsides. As part of its efforts to ensure the safety of Nigerians abroad, the Nigerians in Diaspora Commission is speaking about Northern Cyprus and the mysterious killings of Nigerians, especially students there. According to the chairperson of the commission, Mrs. Abike Dabri Ereoa, there are several cases of human rights abuses there, and the federal government is experiencing difficulty adopting international diplomacy in investigating these cases. One reason is because Nigeria and the UN have no diplomatic relations with Northern Cyprus, a country only recognized by Turkey. Sadly, the latest case of a missing person is that of Nigerian student named Abdul Samad Abubakar. The 28-year-old, 300-level international relations student of Cyprus Science University was reported missing by his mother, Mrs. DJ Ibrahim. The commission, through its secretary, Dr. Suley Yakubu Basi, gave Mrs. Ibrahim the assurance that further investigations will be carried out to help locate her son. He also appealed to the Turkish embassy to double up efforts to protect Nigerians in northern Cyprus. The commission also frowns on the death of 13 persons so far recorded in northern Cyprus between 2016 till date without any resolution. For every country, paying attention to issues affecting its diasporans is critical, which is why newly elected Kenyan President William Ruto is carving out a ministry to address issues affecting its citizens abroad and also focus on boosting remittances in the country. President Ruto discloses this in his inaugural address shortly after taking the oath of office as Kenya's fifth president. Are you a Nigerian in diaspora? Do you have a need to contact Nigerians in Diaspora Commission, NITCOM? Kindly dial any of the numbers on your screen. You can also catch up with all the Commission's activities including news, articles and office events on the website nitcom.gov. Dot NG. Well, the general perception is that students go abroad in search of the kind of qualifications that can fetch them good jobs. Here's what we found about the pros and cons of getting a foreign degree. Research by the United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization, UNESCO, shows the number of students who travel outside of their country of origin to study has grown from around 300,000 in 1963 to 2 million in 2000 and then up to 6 million in 2019. This figure is expected to exceed 8 million by 2025. International students are always on the lookout for the best countries to study abroad and there is no shortage of prime destinations for applicants. Nigeria is ranked one of the topmost countries of origin for international students from Africa. This means that Nigerians send more students abroad than any other country on the African continent. According to data from the UNESCO Institute of Statistics, the number of Nigerian students abroad increased by 164 percent between 2005 and 2015, from 26,997 to 71,351. A key reason for the rise is what many refer to as education tourism, which is a lack of domestic capacity at Nigerian universities when compared with global standards. A straw poll shows that the low level of investment in Nigeria's tertiary education system and the resultant strike actions are leading reasons why young people of university age seek opportunities elsewhere. For Nigerian students, when it comes to preferred destinations, countries like the UK, the US, Canada, Germany, Russia, Malaysia, Cyprus and the Netherlands continue to receive multiple applications and admissions. For the UK, applications from Nigeria were set to be up by 83%, for Pakistan by 53% and for India by 13%. These statistics do not come as a surprise as the UK has been a major destination due to the language and bilateral relations between Nigeria and Britain. But in all of these, Affordability is a major consideration as schooling outside of the shores of the country often comes at a high cost. An analysis of data by the Central Bank of Nigeria 
showed that Nigerians spent about $221 million on foreign education between December 2021 and February 2022. Apart from the high and middle class families who can afford this luxury, over 40% of Nigerian students overseas are said to rely on scholarships. Such financial aid comes from a variety of sources, including employers, charities, international institutions, individuals, and governments at both federal and state levels. In Nigeria, the federal government operates numerous university scholarship programs aimed at supporting postgraduates along with traditional undergraduates seeking to study in the diaspora. Some of these government entities include the Petroleum Technology Development Fund, PTDF, Niger Delta Development Commission, NDDC, Federal Scholarship Board, FSB, Tertiary Education Trust Fund, and numerous state government scholarship boards. Apart from affordability, the annual outbound student figures vary and are usually impacted by macroeconomic trends, ease and speed of visa application processes, availability of post-study work options, and permanent residency opportunities. But like with most endeavors, there are challenges. Scholars hoping to benefit from financial aid, grants, and bursaries often encounter bottlenecks associated with access to promised funds as well as visa application hurdles. On the flip side, new learning experiences, international exposure, better employment opportunities, and finding solutions to societal challenges in the diaspora and back home are some of the gains of studying in the diaspora. Some of the downsides include social exclusion, language and cultural barriers, and intense homesickness. For those who remain abroad after their studies to give back to the education system, there are success stories. Dr. Daya Ulukushi is a remarkable Nigerian administrator putting his excellent education and leadership skills to use at a secondary school in the United Kingdom. Dr. Ulukushi made the news in 2018 after leading Brampton Manor Academy, a state school situated in East Ham, East London, to produce the best A-level results for the year. It is 2022, and Brampton Manor Academy has achieved another outstanding academic feat with Dr. Ulukushi at the helm of affairs. 89 members of the Brampton Manor 2022 class have secured places at Oxford and Cambridge University. It's the highest number recorded in any school in the UK. Anabra State-born Emefile Stella Chinelo is another Nigerian doing the country proud. She won 20 medals for outstanding performance during her master's degree program at the University of Mysore, India. In 2013, she was overall best graduating student of Osman Danfodio University, Sokoto. The internalization of higher education is an important issue in this globalized era. And research on international education and international students suggests that most issues relating to studying abroad are double-edged having both advantages and disadvantages simultaneously. Well, the jury is out on the pros versus the cons. Now, here's the story of a brilliant academic who is the beneficiary of foreign scholarship and is also passionate about linking prospective scholars with scholarship opportunities. Dr. Deji Miyadiniji hails from Ocean State, Southwest Nigeria. He grew up in Lagos and studied pure mathematics at the University of Adoikiti in Ekiti State. He went on to obtain a master's degree from the University of Lagos. His first visit to South Africa was in 2016 for his research proposal defense on applied mathematics. About a year later, he went back home, got married, and moved his family to South Africa mainly for career exposure purposes. In 2020, he concluded his doctoral degree and secured a job as postdoctoral research fellow and lecturer at the Teshuane University of Technology in South Africa. With over 10 years of experience in teaching mathematics across different levels of learning, Dr. Adiniji is committed to the career advancement of early career researchers in mathematics and promoting scientific findings. This drive birthed the Black Mathematicians Association in 2021 a non-governmental community of black professionals in mathematics promoting equality, diversity, and inclusion. The organization aims to identify with the underrepresented black mathematicians that are committed to a life of growth, research at local and international levels, collaboration, training, community service to humanity, and reorientation of application of mathematics to real-life problems. Today, he's internationally recognized for his contributions and input in the mathematics and ICT community and has acquired funding worth over $90,000 for his work. 
Welcome back to the program. Now let's get to know more about this brilliant mathematician. He walks in looking very unassuming as he settles in to speak to us. Dr. Deniji, an indigen of Oshun State, Southwest Nigeria, is the first child in a family of five. He chuckles as he tells us that while academics runs in the family, he disliked mathematics. I'm the first child of the Adenijis kingdom. <laughs> uh, my mom is a teacher, uh, a retired vice principal, and my dad is into building, is a civil engineer, then he does that. Um, we are three, two boys, one girl, and um, okay, we lived in a place called Moshe <laughs> for more than 17 years. So I attended Bobby College at Fadi. And of course, I never liked mathematics. I never liked it because we keep looking for X and um, we never stop finding the X. While he credits his first love for mathematics to his days living in the Mushi area of Lagos, southwest Nigeria, where he once tutored his fellow colleagues, Dr. Adeniji spoke about his frustrations with the admissions process in Nigeria at the beginning of his career. When I got to the university, my, I put it for computer science because I learned computer engineering, so I wanted to build the two together. And I was told my application form was missing. Yeah. At that time, almost all students in all universities in Nigeria want to study computer science. And I don't like it when it is general. If everybody is going this way, there are times I like to go this way for reasons. And boom, they gave me the application form and asked me to fill the course again. Then I filled mathematics by myself. And that was how the mathematics journey started. So I go to church, teach students. I go to lesson to teach to make money because I didn't really want to disturb my parents, you know, as a first child and all of that. So we lived in Mushi and all of that was very interesting. Uh, the training coming up was a bit harsh and which was good because we lived in Face Me and Slappy, the way they call it in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. and, uh, my mom would lock us in the room and go out. Don't talk to anybody, stay in the room. So I only read, play with my younger ones, and watch cartoon. Voltron, Defender of the Universe, mm -hmm. <laughs> and all of that. So then I think I came into maturity and knowledge very early in terms of purpose and career. He talks about the rocky road to his PhD in the diaspora. After I finished my postgraduate diploma in education, I was on my way to Malaysia for a PhD. Uh, but it didn't work out because the money was too much. Then uh, a brother of mine, who is now a professor, Fatoba, and said, hey, prof, I think there's a position here in South Africa for you, instead of going to Malaysia or KwaZulu-Natal, and there's a scholarship for you. So I said, okay, Edmond in quote, let's fire on. And that was how I met myself here in South Africa. Then I've only gone home once. That single decision put his career path on a different trajectory as he arrived in South Africa in 2016 to defend his research proposal in mathematics. And while he was warmly accepted, he immediately noticed a gap in scholarship as it pertains to black African contributions in the field. And then the Black in Mathematics organization was born. I started BMA last year which is black in mathematics association uh, and the reason is because we have so many marginalized and underrepresented people in the community and i thought that okay let's change the paradigm phase of what mathematics is especially in africa uh, because the way we're taught mathematics it almost looks like we cannot meet up with a hero or the white guys but a lot have been changing so i decided to start black in mathematics association alongside with a scholarship opportunity for um, prospective scholars so that they can get exposed. So as we speak, we have close to 236 members across uh, the world, but more dominant in Africa. What's unique about the BMA is its reach and appeal that cuts across both undergraduate and postgraduate genres. What we do there is we try to reach out to the graduate student and the undergraduate so that we can give them a focus that, see, mathematics is beyond the four walls of the classroom. When you come to mathematics, it's more than the lacram, in a way, la peau, that we do. It's life. Um, it's, it's full of everything. So we've been doing that. Then we're trying to reach out to the graduate student. We're trying to reach out to the senior members. Uh, recently, we put out a call to research. 
And at the same time, we just had a partnership with DataCamp in other, I'm sure everybody knows DataCamp. Uh, they're like, um, they're like something like, it's an online community uh, uh, platform, but you learn anything that has to do with machine learning, artificial intelligence, and the fourth industrial revolution. So we just had a partnership with them, with Black and Mathematics Association. And in terms of the beneficiaries of the licenses, Dr. Adeliji has identified two types of African students in the diaspora trying to cut their teeth into the field of mathematics and science. Mathematicians from Nigeria, South Africa, uh, Malawi, Uganda, Cameroon, most of them are probably graduate students who are doing their masters and PhD at the same time and they need to learn this because a quite number of people might not end up in academia but they would go into the industry and they need to learn the skills. But not all students took to him warmly. He tells us about how he struggled to be accepted because of the way he looks. My stature caused me a lot of problems. It caused me a lot of problems. Sometimes you have to get to class and... Um, They're looking for who? Yeah. And you hear yeah, like, uh, okay, please, um, sit down in the back. When the lecturer comes in, you would know. And, I, and you know, finally, because I'm used to it, you like, go and sit down in the back for like five minutes, waiting. Then I stand up and I say, good morning, class. I am Dr. So so and so to teach you. I know they'll say, hey, when now? Get out. <laughs> sometimes um, you see the love, and sometimes you see the insult, and sometimes you see the language barrier. While he was focusing on his studies, he married Emiola, the woman who has supported him for the last six years. There are times that I just feel like it's, you have been working so hard, you could just take a break. But I also understand that in, I need to be there for him. Most times I help him set up his meeting space, help him schedule his appointments. But sometimes I just feel like you need to take a break. And there was a time he, he literally felt sick and I had to seize his laptop for like two weeks. I'm like, I just need you to be fine. And it's hard work that's caused Dr. Adeniji to be successful as a product of scholarship and recognized for his work in the ICT and mathematics industries. His selfless work with students has also gained traction online, as shown in this viral Twitter post, where he intervened in the visa application of four scholars who won the prestigious Dad in Region Scholarship and nearly lost their offers. For me, like I said, if our parents are rich, we don't need scholarship. And if they are not rich, then we need scholarship. And they can't get a scholarship and due to bottleneck visa procedures, lose it. That got me angry. So, and um, they, she just, one of them just reached out to me and said, okay, doc, uh, this is what is happening. So I asked her, how far about your visa application? And she was like, nothing. So they put on the visa February. And dad asked them to be in the country by July 1st, otherwise they lose the highly. And I was like, no, 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 no. So by June 14, if I'm not mistaken, I took the initiative, first time, to write to the minister. That's Dr. Aaron. What's Not Aaron. lady. Yes, exactly. And so I sent him an email, copied his personnel and all of that. And they kept on going back and forth. And, and they keep asking me, Doc, should we give up? Eh? A portion of my heart will be like, yes, you know, I don't know. And the portion will be like, okay, as far as July 1st is not here, let's shoot and see how far we can go. So that uh, June 28th, I took the last bait and I sent an email. I was speaking with their supervisors and that. And then they, get, they got a call. Like there's somebody in South Africa, a mathematician, who sent an email to the minister. And it should be please treated as urgent. I was like, ooh, VIP, treated as urgent. And I think two days after, they all got their visa and came into the Republic to study. Now, I only know one out of them, which is Victoria Okewale, but she now said that there are three, making four. Hey, for me, I was like, hey, destiny must not go to waste. So that was the, the driving force, the propeller. That would be like, I would do everything within my capacity to see that these guys get there. Now, three of them are mathematicians. One of them is a veterinary doctor. So for you to know that it's not just the math people alone, but it's to as long as you have this thing in your heart, to pursue your career with everything you've got. I'll give my back up. He's passionate about mathematics as a mode of communication in STEM, and he's been very successful in bringing mathematical solutions to real-life situations. 
He spent many years advocating for equality, diversity and inclusion, not just in scholarship, but in the societies in which black people reside. But he still confronts stereotypes and tells us how he handles it. I choose not to allow it to affect me because when I step my foot here and I saw the whole thing unraveling, it gives me this mindset that I've not gotten to my final destination. I will just pick up my skill and take it somewhere else where I would be celebrated and I will be appreciated, not because of my color, but because of what I have up here. So, uh, but sometimes it pains where in the same continent you are being regarded as a foreigner. In the same continent, um, there is this barrier that you can't go beyond this. Even when they see that you are giving your very best for you. I'll take my, uh, my um, click as an example. Sometimes in a year, we'll publish close to five papers per year. That brings a lot of money to the department. It brings a lot of money to the university. But none of it goes to us. Well, we don't even look at that because we, we are passionate about what we do. And you hear that, see, there are maybe positions in the department and you'll be like, you can't apply for it. Why? Because you're a foreigner. Or the system says that you're taking the job or you have to publish it like three times. Here's his counsel to Nigerians in the diaspora. Find a way to help. Nigeria is my dream at the same time as Africa. So I'm coming up with something that can link all aspects of academia to fire her because the truth is there's so many fundings are there all they just want you to do is just to think and balance the two together so i've been coming i've been speaking with a quite number of people back home to see how we can help well there you go there's a convergence of opinion that if the right amount of investment appropriate remuneration and infrastructure is provided, then there may be a reduction in the attraction of our young minds to institutions overseas. And as we round off the show, do remember you can catch up with all our previous editions online at www.channelstv.com. I'm Ijoma Onyato. See you next time. <laughs>